close your eyes, watch your breath coming in, breath going out. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't, you can change. You try shorter breathing, more shallow, deeper, deeper, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. Try to get in touch with what the body needs right now, what the mind needs right now as a place to settle down and stay. Because the mind, if it doesn't have its place to stay, it goes wandering around, trying to find its happiness outside. And things outside are changing all the time. As the Buddha said, the world is swept away. We think we can hold on to things outside and then they slip out, slip out of our fingers. We want to find something good in life, we have to look inside. And then you think about where this life is going and what you're going to do after this life. As I would have said, one of the Deva messengers, the messengers that remind you to be heedful, is a baby boy, a baby girl, newly born, lying in its own excrement, totally helpless. You notice babies, when they come into this lifetime, don't have anything in their hands. They're not carrying anything from, from the past, any of their belongings. What they are carrying is their karma, the things they've done in the past. That's their only protection, if their karma was good. In other words, if they observed the precepts, they didn't kill any animals, steal anything, have illicit sex with anyone, didn't lie, didn't take intoxicants, then they're protected. There are people who will want to protect them. But if they've left themselves unprotected, in other words, they've done any of these things, they've killed, they've stolen, they've had illicit sex, whatever, and that's a big opening for danger. So you have to remind yourself, you haven't gone beyond birth yet. So what are you going to take with you? And what's going to be there to receive you on the other end? You have to think about this, because the things you do from day to day to day will determine the opportunities that are open for rebirth. The places that are really good are closed to people who break the precepts. They're open to people who hold by the precepts. So you want to make sure those openings are available. Look at your actions from day to day. As the Buddha said, there are lots of things that you could lose that aren't really all that serious. We, we listen to them and they sound pretty serious to us. You lose your wealth, lose your health, lose your relatives. But he says that's not serious because you can get those things back. But if you lose your virtue and you lose your right view, then it's a long, hard road to recovery. Because again, that kind of loss leaves you totally unprotected. When the trap door falls out away from you, under your feet in this lifetime, and you suddenly find yourself someplace else, you won't have a soft landing. And the soft landing is provided by the good things you do and by the fact that you've abstained from breaking the precepts, abstained from killing, stealing, illicit sex, telling lies, taking intoxicants. So regard these things as, as important standards by which to live. And these aren't just old cultural norms that the Buddha decided to pick up from India. He saw that they really did have an impact on people's minds and their lives. And like you want to get your mind under control while you meditate, well, it's good not to have harmed anybody, harmed any animals, harmed any beings, any human beings. So then it's a lot easier for the mind to settle down with itself in the present moment with a sense of well-being. So for your well-being now and on into the future, be very careful not to lose your virtue, not to lose your right view. The view that your actions really do make a difference between whether you'll be happy or not. And act only in ways that will lead to a solid happiness, a long-term happiness. That way you keep yourself protected.